Guys, we're back with the screen team. My name is Chris, being joined by Timex, and we have uh, we've had a, a really, really good show. And Timex, you know, uh, you and I were. We're, we're talking on on Facebook, and uh-huh. you had mentioned to me you're like, man, I, re- I really wish you guys would do this this old Disney classic that I love. Right. And you were telling me about it, and I was like, man, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, I, I I consider myself a, a movie nerd. Uh-huh. I know a lot about movies, but the, this particular movie you told me about, I knew nothing of. Can you tell us the name of the film? I can tell you, it is the Scarecrow of Romney Marsh, also known aka Doctor Sin. Um, there, there's a reason you haven't heard of it, and I'll get to that, but it's okay. actually a review of three movies. Three? Three movies in one is what we're going to do, because the, the, it's all based on the Robert Thorndike book that came out uh, like 1923, mm-hmm. based on, according to Disney, it's based on a real person who lived in the area. It was released originally as a black and white movie in 1937 as Dr. Sin. Uh, which was more of it, each movie, each version of this, they change him a little. In the original Dr. Right. Sin, he was more of a Scarlet and Pimpernel kind of a guy. Okay. Um, so, which, which they did that later, Hammer, Hammer Horror Films put this version out on DVD. It come out, it was called Night Creatures, and it was also called Captain Clegg when it was in the theaters, which came out in 1962. Okay. Um, Hammer kind of wanted to. Ju- they had found out that Disney was in England filming yeah. his movie, so they wanted to jump the gun on him. <laughs> they went ahead and got the rights to the book, but they couldn't use the name Doctor Sin because Disney had already sewed up all the rights to it. So they changed the character to Captain Clegg, which is really a really good version. I like that when Peter Cushing plays the main character uh-huh. in that version. Um, and then in 19, the following year, 1963 was when Disney's version came out and he'd really Disney and I, Disney, I, Disney, Disney did Disney fied, Disney fied. There you go. Yeah. He said he, he cleaned it up, changed it to, to his version. Yeah. It was originally released as a theatrical movie in 60, 63, mm-hmm. uh, later, Later times, when I seen it, it came out on Disney's Wonderful World of Color. It was ran through the Halloween season as a as a mini series, three part mini series. In Disney's Wonderful World, he would come out. Walt would come out and tell you a little bit about the story. In the beginning, he tells you that this is his favorite story. It was a story he had always wanted to do, mm-hmm. and he wanted to do more with it. But then he died and was unable to really follow out with the story. And the story of Doctor Sin. Is with like I said, it's a true story. He was, he was a, a multiple personality kind of guy. He had he was a preacher during the daytime and a smuggler at night. But he would <laughs> smuggle stuff in a Zorro kind of way to give the money to the locals who couldn't mm-hmm. afford their taxes to help the farmers. So he would do things. Um, as you find out originally, he was a pirate who was a well-known pirate. So he actually has three people in the story. Which is played in the Disney version by Patrick McCoogan, Patrick right? McCoo- yeah, and he was in Braveheart, right? He was in Braveheart. He was uh, the prisoner, and he was in Secret Agent. So he had his own kind of career. This being my favorite thing, what I liked about it originally was it scared the crap out of me. Not because it was a scary character, but he has this evil, sinister laugh that, mm-hmm. as a five-year-old kid, would just terrify me. <laughs> I would have to turn that off when the intro come on, and then turn the movie back on so I could watch it. And uh, like I said, he was a Robin Hood Zorro kind of a character. He uh, he had three. He had two people who helped him, also in masks. No mm. one really knew who they were, and he would just drive the soldiers and the king crazy because they couldn't catch him. He was always one step ahead of them. Uh, there are stories that say maybe it wasn't a real person, but maybe based on various people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Disney claimed it was true story so i'm going with disney that's right man right. disney he, never lies he wouldn't lie to us <laughs> then i originally seen it this was the original version i seen it on these little these little real films that they would play at school it was later released on vhs tape which go for a couple of hundred dollars if you have one of those do you have one i do not oh, yeah. i have the dvd issue which came out later it has this is actually a bootleg so i probably shouldn't buy that but it, <laughs> it has both versions it has the theatrical version <laughs> which they completely cleaned up. Mm-hmm. They um, redid all the stuff. They they have some behind the scenes footage on there and it came out in like a $300 
box edition that you could buy from Disney. It came with a little film, really, really expensive, very hard to find. The reason it's hard to find is I have friends who are Imagineers at Disney, and they have been wanting to reboot this movie for the last 10 years. Yeah, They want Johnny Depp to play the role because they think he would be good enough to play the multiple characters because they're completely different people by day and by night. Mm -hmm. And they wanted him to do it. Um, the story I was told, they wanted him to do it, and then he chose to do The Lone Ranger instead. Um, so they're still hoping that this will come back up, which is why they haven't reissued it. Because they want to they want to do the new version. They want to do the new version, keep the story secret, kind of like what Hitchcock did with Psycho when mm -hmm. he went and bought all the books so no one could find out what the story was, that was about. That so genius. <laughs> Disney doing the same idea, just yeah. keeping it underground, keeping it where they don't know. People who, who did see it on TV or like me, who was such a big fan of this character, uh, are really excited to to see it come back. Most of us would rather see them reissue the original version in a little cheaper form, but I'm sort of 50-50 on the remake. Mm -hmm. With Johnny Depp, there's a possibility it's really going to be great or it's really going to be bad. That's a 50-50 yeah. shot. You don't know, you man. You don't know. It depends how much they change the story around. So, so I'm... I'm I'm curious, you know, this this show is is airing on on Halloween. If you are lucky enough to have an edition somewhere in your basement or your attic, is this a good kind of Halloween flick to to put on? It is a good Halloween story. It's all dark and creepy. A lot of it takes takes place at night. The the scarecrow character is really great. I love the mask and his voice and the, the whole creepy attitude of it. Yeah. Um, like I said, it, it scared me a lot when I was a kid, but I was always a huge fan of Scarecrows, even to this day, which could have reversed, came back for me seeing this originally. Yeah. That's so cool, man. I appreciate uh, your love for this movie and, and all your paraphernalia. You got yeah, the... I, they put it out in comic books. Disney was going to reissue, was going to do more series mm -hmm. with Dr. Sin before he died. So before they were able to really remake the movies, they just put them out in a comic book form. So there's like three or four of those comic books, also really hard to find. Nice. If you do find them, they're, they're usually pretty expensive. Dude, I'm. Are you gonna leave these with me? Can I, I am gonna can leave I watch these. You. Awesome. Yes, I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna check these out when we get done, man. Time Max, thank you so much for for coming on well, the thanks show. Thanks so much. I had a great time. There were some strange characters in the hallway out there. There, there always are here <laughs> in the radio station. You never know who you're gonna find, man. But uh, uh, you're a very busy man. You're out doing a lot of different stuff. If people want more information on Timex, the the Drive and Rain, the other projects you That's do, right. where, where do they go? I'm online. I'm doing a lot of stuff. I also work with a lot of horror hosts. I've been. I've revived uh, Misty Brew, who was a big local TV host from the 80s we end up getting her in the hall of fame mm -hmm. i've also worked with baron von crypt who was a st louis horror host in 1970 who i had seen we got him in the hall of fame mm -hmm. so i'm really doing a lot of that working with the, with the monster channel which you guys are on now yeah rocking i know it's <laughs> awesome <laughs> so uh yeah i'm just doing a lot of stuff i like to keep myself busy with fun stuff all right there you go that's time x and uh we appreciate your time and thank you for for watching and listening to the screen team remember we'll be back at you next saturday with another hour-long edition for time x and chris we are the screen team and remember we want you to know before you go